Python. Um, yes, now the registration is ongoing. So, um, Shorena, due to the problems that Elena had, I would ask you kindly um, to start your talk, mm -hmm. which is on the Iron Age Sanctuary of Nazarlebi in Georgia and its bronze deposits. And after your talk, I will give the word to Elena, who has prepared, you know, now it's not an introduction, but let's say a post faction to your talk, and then introduce the discussion if this is okay with you. Um, yes, can you hear me correctly? <clears throat> yes. Yes. So now everybody is already connected. We are quite a lot. I repeat for all of you um, that were not here a few minutes ago. If you have questions during the talk, please do use the chat. We will not interrupt Shorena, but I will take note of the questions you formulate and use them um, after the post faction by, by my colleague El Narova. So Shorena, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks. Um, so um, the topic of today's lecture is sanctuary of Nazarlebi and its deposits. I will try to give a brief overview of the excavation history, present the work, carried out between 2017 and 2021 and focus on the deposit finds. Um, so, yeah. Uh, in November 2016, the Nazar Levy site was chosen for a cooperation between Ilya State University and Martin Luther University Halle-Wittenberg after a common trip to Kacheti region. The principal um, investigators are Pater Buchrashvili and um, Felix Blocher. The excavation results will be investigated in my PhD thesis uh, in German. Um, and five campaigns have taken place uh, since 2017, 2017, 2018, 19, 21, uh, 21 were excavations and 2022 was just work up campaign uh, on now the, yes Nazarlebi is located in the Georgian region of Kacheti near the municipality of the Doplistraro with about 6000 inhabitants Southeast of the Doplistraro, the Shiraki Plateau forms a special landscape between the valleys uh, of the Iori and Alazani rivers. It borders with Azerbaijan. The Shiraki Plain is a fertile um, plateau with intensive agriculture. Today's villages are situated on the northern edge of the plain. Uh, the natural hill has been internally terraced and converted into a fortress-like structure. The terracing is clearly visible on these um, photos. Uh, the terraces are sloping from west to east and um, the side is approximately 150 to 130 meters large. Mm, here is the trigonometric point uh, at 716.5 meters and was constructed in Soviet times on the upper terrace. The first archaeology, archaeological excavations on Nazar Levi ramparts were carried out in 1991 by Besarion Maisuradze and Georgi Mindiashvili. 
The reasons for this was the decoding of the aerial photographs from 1971. Many comparable sites from the Bronze and Iron Ages have been investigated in the last uh, 50 years, mainly by Chiazo Pizzelauri and based on this aerial uh, photos. In 1997, Nazarlebe was again, uh, again targeted by archaeologists. During a survey of the German-Georgian expedition in Kacheti, Andreas Furtwängler and Winfried Ortmann made a um, sondaging. Um, the test excavation revealed only two shirts. Um, in 2007, as part of an ethno-archaeological research project uh, at uh, Ilya State University, a uh, tumulus was excavated below Nazar um, During this excavation, several sondages were made by Vaja Varazashvili on the Nazar Lebi terraces. And here we go, we are here. <clears throat> Our new Georgian German excavations began in September 2017. During the, the first campaign, a former trend on the eastern edge of the upper rampart ring was extended. The second trench was open directly on the rampart. Three have been there, there have been pavement like wires made of bubble. During this campaign, another area was opened where a gate, gateway or passageway situa situation between the areas of the upper and uh, lower rampart was suspected. And Orto photo produced by our team member Surat Kutinize gives a convenient overview of the 2017 work. So here blue marked the advanced former trench, um, green marked so called uh, wall trench, and Yellow uh, marked so called um, gate trench. Um, an area of 125, 120 meters before the start um, of the campaign in 20. 2018, York Fassbinder from Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich and his team carried out the geophysical prospection on the upper and second terraces. The magnetogram shows us a large number, about 100 of almost uh, a quietly sized uniform pit complexes but no but no recognizable structures um, the working surface for the campaign in 2018 were selected on the basis of this survey first we dug plateau trench one it's the uh, blue mark and next Plateau trend to two in red. Uh, <clears throat> the area uh, with uh, this area with um, surface ten to ten meters uh, called uh, called a plateau trench one was marked out in a way that the stone. Uh, Formations visible. 
this one. Um, the visible on the surface were included. After removing the surface, the narrow line like but irregularly rounded constructions can be seen. The function of this spinning is not clear. Um, under this layer, we found stone forma formations here uh, of um, different kinds. They were constructed from larger stones, some of which were rectangular structures, but mostly they were held up in heaps. Um, overall, the strange has shown to be poor in finds. Only a fragment of bronze ring, a bread stamp, cornel bit, obsidian, and silex were founded. Um, the pottery is particularly interesting and is comparable to the pottery from the stone digits from 2021. This pottery hasn't yet been evalu evaluated and we hope we will analyze it in this year. Mm. And the second area, Plateau Train 2, on the top, change the, the picture of the site completely. Uh, the work here began on September uh, 10th. Immediately during the removal uh, of the grass, the ceramic shards apart, including the first small bottle. A next day, after a short time of cleaning the surface from grass and dirt, an immense bronze deposit was found. Um, a few days of work later, we came on the stone structure, which was originally connected to the uh, deposit, formed a segment of the stone circle. Um, about uh, deposit, we will um, speak um, later. First, I show first a short uh, description of the campaign 2019 and 2021. Mm. <clears throat> the main goal of, uh, of the campaign 2019 was to uncover the wall the, the whole double shell masonry their quarter areas um, three quarter areas plateau trench three plateau uh, trench four and plateau trench five were open the stone circle with a um, diameter of 19 meters was almost completely uncovered. The entrance situation was unclear because of the trigonometrical points um, here. Um, the double, uh, double shell is um, careful white with two rods made from heaven blocks, uh, the gap being filled with pebble. Um, we have currently no idea concerning the height and construction of the wall, since normally only one layer is preserved. Um, in 2019, uh, we dig also three under trenches. They are on the upper, uh, on the lower terrace, but it was not really successful. Uh, uh, the archaeological 
archaeological field works in 2021 was focused mainly on the sanctuary. The main goals were to remove the trigonometric point in order to clarify the entrance uh, situation, also remove all the walkways in the stone circle. After removing the trigonometric point, a large um, system of slops on blocks uh, was found between the left and right entrance to the stone circle. After cleaning the, this area, the ceramic powering was visible in Plateau Trench uh, 5. And this is here. Uh, three sondages were created during the 2021 campaign. Um, a sondage made in Plateau Trench 2 is of great importance. Um, the samples could be dated by radiocarbon dating in Mannheim at uh, the Kurt Engelhardt uh, Center of Archaeology. Three samples were examined. Two of them was uh, bone and one charcoal. They yield a wide dating range from the 15th to the 11th century BC. Um, this new radiocarbon date of samples from Nazar Levi shed a light on the absolutely chronolo uh, chronology of the East Georgian sanctuaries. With this date, a local chronology can be established for the first time. And uh, so, uh, the three deposits from Nazar Levi. As already maintained, um, we found three uh, deposits in the western part of the stone circle. There are certain similarities to deposit one in terms of the form, location, character, but there are also some difference between these um, deposits, especially in terms of um, content. <clears throat> Deposit one contains uh, 486 bronze objects, um, 400 57 of them are votive swords, uh, 14 lance points, four different round, round discs, uh, two bracelets, uh, two razor knives, a sword with pommel, a digger uh, with pommel, a circle, um, double, uh, double axe, uh, also a um, Expendant, only one pottery cup and shell. Uh, in 2021, uh, we couldn't uh, carry out the field work because we didn't have the excavation permit. Um, the reason was uh, the restructuring in the Cultural Ministry of Georgia. Uh, and we use the time in the Doplistaro to evaluate the finds. All small finds are deposited um, in the Museum of Re Regional History, the Doplistaro. Um, fortunately, the, the staff is very helpful and have adjusted uh, the working hours uh, to us. Uh, 
<clears throat> all 457 Max words were well preserved. Uh, a badly broken piece was found outside the the the, the, the poor, um, uh, in Plateau Trench Two. Mm. In this dimension, uh, the Marx words are not known in the world of the South Caucasus. Um, some several pieces were known from other cities in Kaheti, for example, in Shilda Sanctuary, um, seven pieces, Melgrele uh, one, uh, three pieces, or as great goods, uh, for example, in Didnauri. Until now, these words have not paid attention, but with such diversity, we have the opportunity to recognize the unicorns uh, of this genius. All objects have hatching of varying intensity. Hallmarking can be seen under the patina on 42 pieces. The longest piece is uh, 49 centimeter and the shortest only 18 um, Point one centimeter. Um, most of them are thinner than one millimeter. We measured in the middle of um, of the sheet. Um, here are some um, statistics of the Otir uh, swords. Um, many swords have sediments uh, or organic materials in the handles, uh, bites of 77 samples without sediment vary between 60 five and 158 grams. The shoulders of the swords are shaped differently. The most common white is 90, 93 millimeters. Only individual pieces are more than 110 millimeter wide. We have divided the handle types into three uh, main groups, white, more than 90, um, 13.9 millimeters, middle, eight to included uh, 13.9 millimeters, and narrow, less um, than, eight millimeters. Blades uh, can also be divided into three upper groups, rounded, intentionally trenched, and aborted or broken. It is tricky that intentionally trenched tips are the most common variant. So here, it's, uh, <clears throat> uh, thoroughly usable swords and intentionally damaged dagger are with geometrical and zoomorphic ornaments decorated. The sword is uh, 50, 55.7 cm large and uh, 855 uh, gram. A 
according to Chiazo Pizzalauri's classification, they belong to the first Tia point three and are dated to the end of the second millennium BC. The zoomorphic uh, depiction of the animal shows a direct connection with the, with the depiction from Dignauri. Sword is on display in the collection at the Middle Histo Medical History Museum in Tbilisi, Tuski. I mean, um, Sword from Dignauri. Uh, the another find from deposit one that requires special research is the double axe with the engraved symbols on both sides. The form represents a rarity in the South Caucasus. We found a miniature axe in the eastern half of the plateau trench three. It represents the form, but is uh, it is a manufacturing defect. Um, a direct parallel represents a double a double axe from Helendorf, Azerbaijan in Kurgan one, excavated in the year nine. 231. Place to, st place to stay is unknown, and um, although, although we have any information about the core. Uh, over all the finds from the Skorgan as are very important in connection with the deposits from Nazar Lebi. Uh, some some more finds of deposit one, um, Razor knives, uh, Razor knives here. Um, there are also a variety in Georgia or in uh, and in South Caucasus. Um, in deposit one. We have two different types. Uh, two more pieces will be found in Plateau Trend um, 3, but outside from the depo uh, deposit finds. Um, the axe pendant repeats the blade shapes of the double axe. Um, in the western part of the stone circle um, in Plateau Trench 3, we found two portal deposits, but deposits were in the vessels close to each other. Um, content differs from deposit 1. No weapons, just jewelry and uh, numerous beads. The following objects were found in the port two. Um, for example, this axis pendants and lunula pendants. Um, altogether, more than 340 pieces. Deposit two also containing glass small trade vessel. <clears throat> Deposit two included nine differently shaped X uh, pendants, 61 lunula pendants, 30 different buttons, 33 rings or chair, chain links. Six bracelets. The most uh, special is the example with this decoration.
the, the 84 the 84 pieces of uh, plates represent a large part of the deposit i mean this kind um, mostly around completely flat carved and or stepped also drop shaped pendants are completely flat or with relief yeah. they show a um, variety of designs in additional uh, there are countless small red beads or pendants made of cornel agat um, possible coral um, 16 print bits um, of various shapes five bronze bits uh, two dentalium bits and a fragment of one and 6.5 grams of very thin free beards here similar to deposit two deposit three was also in a vessel um, the shape could not be reconstructed it is clearly less extensive than the uh, deposit uh, two only fourteen bronze objects, uh, twenty-four point five gram bronze fragments, and various bits. In this deposit, there are some uh, spectral specialities. Fragmentary preserved diadem and five large beads yeah. it is notable that uh, one end of this diadem was in the port two uh, the stack gives evidence that the ports uh, two and three were deposited at the same time the fragments were measured together and the length is um, 45.5 uh, centimeter <clears throat> uh, major advance in nazar levy's research was the scientific study of metals within the framework of the research project financed by the Fritz Thyssen Foundation. It was possible to scientifically examine a large number of bronze objects from Nazar Levy. Uh, many thanks to Dr. Simone Arnold, Dr. Rene Kunze and Dr. Marianne Mödlinger for carrying out this important research project. 67 Nazar Levy bronze artifacts were selected, a total of uh, 82 samples were taken from deposits and other finds from the stone circle. Chemical analysis were used to determine the alloys, metallographic uh, examinations clarified the processing characteristics of the objects trace element patterns and lead isotopy allowed to the clarification of the provenance questions of the copper rough material Some uh, important results can be summarized as um, 
follows. It was uh, found that um, the chemical composition of these solid artifacts is quite uniform within the object groups, especially weapons and clothing elements. For example, tin is intentionally added to increase hardness, but also to achieve a distinct golden glow. On the other hand, arsenic is intentionally added to provide a silvery coloration. It was also found that the mock swords allowed only symbolic use. Indications of the production of objects from recycled copper could not be found, which makes a big difference, um, for example, to the object from, from Udapno, which date about 100, uh, 200 years later. Perhaps at the time the objects were deposited in Nazarlevi, there was still sufficient access to raw materials. Or the depositing of bronzes and just their removal from the metal circle was of different importance. Mm. With regard to the raw material base, it could be shown that the copper comes mainly from regional deposits, probably from Loduani or, or Artana, they are in Lago Dehi. Deposits from the Lesser Caucasus appear to have been less frequent. For a large number of the objects examined, there are some indications. Above all of deposits in the Eastern Greater Caucasus, which were prospected a um, few years ago. ago. <clears throat> Probably uh, it mainly. I'm um, oh, sorry. It's not important. <laughs> so, in the context of this lecture, um, I will not go into the ceramics. Um, Briefly summarize it, um, the ceramic from the trench plateau two, three, four, and five, also um, from sanctuary, be described as medium fine gray ware, fired at low temper temperature and uh, partially decorated. Only a few forms could be reconstruate, reconstruated. Uh, the Meligere type bottles for ritual use aren't found in such large numbers as it is now in the other sanctuaries. Only 12 pieces could be detected. Um, of course, we have uh, some special shapes um, and that um, they are still being uh, being investigated. Uh, many times, thanks to Sabina Brodbeck Yuka, she helped us very well um, and uh, it was uh, possible to restoring, for example, this uh, jar from Plateau Train 2, nearly from deposit or this cup. Uh, 
was a great help. Um, chain stamps or bread stamps found inside the stone well. Only one piece was found in the plateau trench one. Um, the stamping surface are um, square or round and have simple but uh, different patterns. Considering the sanctuary and, uh, and hilltop settlement at Nazar Lady in the context of comparable cities in Eastern Georgia, some, di some difference can be seen here. Uh, despite a great affinity with the sanctuary of Shilda, clear difference can be observed in Nazar Lady. Uh, for example, compared to Shilda, Nazar Levy lacks uh, the pits. No anthropomorphic figures have been um, excavated. In contrast to Shilda, the zoomorphic figures are limited to beards uh, and outside the, 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 the poor finds only one deer figure has been discovered so far. Two zoomorphic vessel handles and an applique deer. Two other excavations in the area uh, is are very particularly um, for research uh, questions of Nazar Levy. Uh, it are Dignauri and uh, Takti Perda. Um, that one's and many thanks, and thanks to the founders, uh, Deutsche Orient Gesellschaft and Gerda Henkel Foundation, as well as uh, the Ilya University and Martin Luther University of Halle Wittenberg and the excavation directors for conducted the excavation and thanks to all team members and thank you for your attention. It's a difficult uh, <laughs> this way uh, from uh, lecture. <laughs> So can you, can you hear me? Yes. 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 So Yes, thank you, Sharena, for your uh, for the presentation of this uh, really exceptional uh, site, uh, which shows once again how uh, how many surprises we can uh, we can have uh, still in the in the southern southern Caucasus. So uh, first. Before uh, going to questions, I would like to uh, um, apologize for, be, for uh, being late. So I would like to introduce, uh, although too late, uh, Shorena. Uh, so Shorena Davitashvili is uh, a PhD candidate at Ilya State University and the Martin Luther University of Halle Wittenberg. And she is part, she has been for years part of the team excavating at Nazar Lady in cooperation which is a cooperative excavation between Ilya State University of Tbilisi and Martin Luther University of Halle Wittenberg. Uh, the, field, the directors are Professor Pata Bukrashvili for the Georgian side and Professor Felix Blocher for the German side. So Shorena has been has uh, co-authored with uh, the, the director of the excavation several articles articles about the excavation and her PhD project uh, is in fact dedicated to the interpretation of the site of Nazar Lebi in the context of the late Bronze Early Iron Age settlements in eastern, in eastern Georgia. Um, 
So uh, now I would like, first of all, to ask uh, if there are any questions. I'm sure that there will be because this is a, a very important uh, discovery and opens, uh, still has, uh, there are many open questions about this sanctuary and the, uh, and the, the objects which is it contained. So I would like, first of all, to ask uh, some anybody who has questions to come forward. If not, I have some content. So uh, Alice Men Mendola, Mendola, uh, you can. Uh, uh, Hi, Helen. Uh, yes. yes. Ah, uh, we're all hello. together here. Hello. Hi, Hello, ciao, Nicola. Anna. Ciao. So, so, the, 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 the question is regarding the chronology. If uh, if they found uh, a later Iron Age, because we work in Tavatepe, that is in the along the Axtafachai nearby, uh, you know the Kura the Kura River, and we have both the late Bronze, early Iron Age, and uh, a, a wide. Uh, um, you know, a series of huts belonging to uh, middle to late Iron Age, like dated uh, C14 samples dating from 999 to 735 BC. If you have uh, similar, uh, you know, materials from uh, later period, the latest piece are this. Uh... There and it will be eighth uh, century. Okay, so you have a later. Can you show again? The... It's it's only one. I I think it's um, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> because uh, most of uh, objects are earlier than um, uh, ten uh, century BC. Okay, and you have and you have you have the C fourteen dates. Sorry, absolute chronological dates. Do you have anything? Uh, yes, we have, but they are from sondages, and it is not uh, the niveau from uh, um, stone circle. But I think it's not really. Uh, Big difference. Uh, the chronol I can show you. Sorry. There are we have only three um, dates. Oh, here they are. Sorry, and, we missed the beginning. Uh, um, this two bone and okay. It's between fifteen and. 11th century, okay, but so it's upper, um, the, um, the, the zondage are more than one meter uh, deeper than a uh, stone circle. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So... Kevin, I think you can uh, you can uh, uh, ask your question. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Long time not see. Oh. Okay, some of you showed me that. It was really an excellent presentation. Um, I've, as you probably know, I have visited some of the sites at Nazar Levi with Bata and um and um Zorav Skutinidze. so i have some idea of the landscape and i'm also familiar with the work that Chiazo Piscalauri did elsewhere in Cajeti. and what i'm trying to do is sort of see this uh, in, i might say the big picture because i think what we're seeing now is a, something like a regional complex of sacred sites throughout eastern georgia um with uh, similar artifacts i mean what you as you showed uh the ones that have been found at Nazar Lebi are very similar to the inventories from the sites excavated uh, by the uh, Piscalauri team earlier, like at Shilda and Melani and some of the other sites. And um, <clears throat> so I have a couple of questions. One is about the orientation, to the extent you've been able to determine this, the orientation of what seem to be these round 
buildings, uh, constructions, which may well be some kind of sanctuary. The one from Shilda that you showed is oriented toward the northeast. What we often see in sort of regional complexes of sites is that sometimes they share a common orientation, like say the dolmens of, of southwestern France, which tend to have an, an orientation toward the east. And has is there anything emerged about something like a common cultural background that is manifested in things like, say, the geographic orientation of the sites? Are the entrances in one direction toward the northeast or some other direction? Has there has anything been found uh, in this respect? So, I mean, uh, that's that's one question, and uh, and the other one has to do with the uh, the seals or the stamps um i i think uh you mentioned that they were used to stamp bread right that something so, the, so they were used to sort of Im, put a some kind of imprint on presumably this would be bread that was baked as an offering something like what the swans do in present day georgia and uh, is there any evidence that this was their function? Like, have there been, like, say, evidences of organic residue found on the stamps that indicate they were used, they were in contact with, say, with, like, say, cereals, like bread dough or something like that? So, yeah, these are the two questions I have for you. Um, so, one question. Um, it's a good question <laughs> because... Uh, Mm. Can I answer in Georgian? It will. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. If you want, it, no, no. Seriously, you can. I can translate the answer if it's for the others here. Imagine. Because uh, it's a very difficult uh, question. Esak it fikasar kuviaris jer imit avrom ratkma unda parallele biar sebops magram chuen guaks problema. Archaeology or it has as resident. I mean, Omrom is Sagral or in Agebo, baby, Romle, Bisuque, Dait Hara, Quax Dalian, Tiri Informatia, Raviti, Trenchild, Shesaka. So, just to summarize, if it's what it's showing up. Uh, so she says that there's still quite a bit of complex archaeological questions to re to resolve concerning some of these sites, and there's still a good de a good deal of work to do to kind of uh, get a fuller picture. Okay, that was any. And, uh, and um, we have to found the parallels in Caucasus in Middle of Europe or. I don't know. We have um, a more question open, uh, but uh, the uh, about the magram and choldigum, the very materia, the documentatia, arguable, chen imisa shalebas from just at can we hear what? Goni just at can we get kitwa? Kwen paralleleps kulismot nazar lepsada swa sakralum nagebobet shoris. Ogan skutu bita es shilda es adre vrats pitskalauris gundma gathara upoz. Yeah. Tel Aviv regionchi es ik orientatia. Is it Agmos Alet his Ken, Chilot his Ken to our orientatia packed Eurot Kamuiqueta Magram? Mines are which mines Pebric Iquari, Romelitz Naglebi document at his Camo or Tuli Sapasuhoa. So it looks like they they have seen some signs of, of a common orientation of these sites, but there's still, you know some uncertainty in the uh, the earlier documentation and there and so it's it's not entirely resolved yet okay um the purist sabechna web sirat chekheba na it's ra khia gamokleba ar aris chatarebuli me chemtvis ar aris tsnobili rom raime Sinjebi Arebuli or Piliosta Gamukleuli was a come there. 
So with regard to the bread stamps, there's they still haven't carried out uh, chemical analyses, and so uh, so far it isn't known yet whether they have any traces of organic material that indicate uh, their their function. And uh, okay, well, Didi Malua, that's single chain missing. Yeah. Sorry, it's uh, for me. It's uh, easier to speak in Georgian. <laughs> Okay. Well, and I know uh, Kevin speak uh, very well, George. <laughs> so the next is Xia Wen. Um, yeah. yeah, thank Hi. you so much. Hi. And so it's Hi. wonderful talk. Thank you. So, and it's also wonderful findings. I only have a small question, which might be too, like, too easy. So what's the relationship between like the the tumulus excavated in 2007 and the and your findings Thanks. it's a good question um uh the the ceramic are uh, stains um in in the tumulus are uh, comparable beads uh, they will have in uh, uh deposits um, I think it was a um, similar paper. Mm -hmm. They were a um, similar cultural price. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Any other question? If not, in the meanwhile, I have a question. Uh, so you, you say that, that the C14 dates come from uh, uh, soundings, so from levels which are under the, the level of the, of the hordes. So uh, do, do you have any hint about uh, uh, the function of this in of the area in these pre sanctuary uh, phases uh, or i mean uh, do you think there was an earlier sanctuary or that the function was uh, was different um i think it was sanctuary and other Function is not to see there. Um, perhaps we have um, graves outside uh, the, the sanctuary in the ost uh, part of uh, upper terrace. Mm, but uh, the trenches we have. Uh, we had uh, started in 2021, but uh, we uh, had to stop and this year we couldn't uh, dig. Yes. And another question about the context, for instance, of the pottery. So the, the metal was in a sort of a small deposits, different deposits. But what about the pottery? I mean, was it, uh, did you have entire vessels <laughs> in groups? Uh, did, did you see any connections with the de metal deposits? Or, um, I mean, how, how was the situation? Um, so uh, the two, uh, the deposit two and three were in vessels, uh, but um, I think it was not uh, brand, um, not um, um, without brand, or uh, because it was um, the beads are directly in ceramic. It was very um, bad quality, if I can to, um, say this. And uh, in Plateau Trench 2, we had a so-called uh, ceramic Contra, um, 
Konzentration und uh, we have I don't know I will uh, uh, it's a more small jars but all the uh, shapes are ah oh, so difficult um, I think only ceramic was only produced for uh, sacral uh, function. But it was found in pieces. I mean, oh, they were uh, scattered the shirts. On do you have uh, only entire or uh, reconstructable vessels? Um, only these small uh, flashes are full. But uh, all under uh, vessels are um, in shapes. Yeah. So there is another question by Xiao Wen. Yeah, sorry. Just another quick question. Mm -hmm. So, did you find any human remains in your excavation? Mm -hmm. Like human skeleton? No. Okay. No. Thank you so much. <laughs> we have. Um, uh only one uh bone so from um uh, uh, so from animal animal uh we have uh, no uh, bones and, and no, no skeletons okay i see thank you so much yeah so i see there is another question by sarit Pat. Hi, Hi. Hi. Uh, mad love, Chorona. Um, I have a question about the context. Sorry, I joined a few minutes late, so maybe I missed something. Uh, but since we are talking about a unique site or a unique set of sites, I would like to ask, um, well, two different questions, but are related about context. First of all, about the relations between this site or type of sites um, and settlements like regular, so, so to speak, settlements um, in the area. And the second thing is about um, the, the artifacts and what you find comparing um, to what you have there in the settlements. That is, I mean, we're talking about uh, let's call it a structured uh, deposition with all the problematic um, uh, aspects of this, um, of this term, but it's a special structured deposition uh, that gathers specific types of artifacts that um, you say have not been used uh, for their functional uh, original uses. So to what extent, extent do we find these artifacts in settlements like the swords or uh, things like that? Uh, you find them in settlements and you can compare them. Um, or do you have any specific artifacts that you find only in sanctuaries um, and special sites like that? And you would not find them in settlements because I think um, the, that would give us uh, some idea to what for me is very interesting, how these sites came to be, how this assemblage was, you know, um, was put together and, <clears throat> and how it, it's related to the wider um, context of the area. So hope I made any sense. Uh, <laughs> I have, um, from deposit one, uh, there are SWAT, the day is uh, for Ilzebale or Diva, uh, also lenses. Uh, um, a different type is uh, preserved knife. I don't know. I uh, it's uh, very certain for Caucasus, um, and uh, I don't know. Some example, um, any examples from uh, Georgia? Uh, there are other uh, objects outside the port. Uh, they are fully usable, but uh, 
behave uh, on the hill, uh, any evidence for settlement yet? So how far would be the farthest, uh, I mean, the close, the nearest settlements how, that you know of? How it is now, I think, uh, I think it now, yeah. it's okay. um, um, about 10, uh, 10 uh, kilometers, a yeah. big, uh, biggest uh, settlement in the region. Yeah. And uh, the finds are very comparable uh, to Dignauri. Okay. For example, the uh, forty of swords they have in the graves, or uh, lunula pendants, uh, or the pallets uh, and swords is uh, direct comparable to uh, Didnauri. Yeah. Okay. And in the region are more uh, the small uh, settlements. So will be investigated, I hope. Yeah. Okay, my love. <laughs> so I can just intervene. I think, yes, for, for settlements, not so much is known, but there are many graves. And I think that the assemblage is fully comparable with the assemblage from graves. And if I may, if there are no other uh, no other uh, question, I have another question. That is, did you? Uh, I mean, did, do you have any ideas about the differences between the different deposits? Because let's say the first one was mostly composed of weapons. The second and the third one were mostly composed of mm -hmm. ornaments, and the second and the third were a bit different in uh, um, in types of objects, but you said that one piece of one uh, one uh, diadem from one uh, or uh, from one, uh, one from one deposit joined the, the pieces from the other one uh, as if they were they had been deposited together. So, do do you have any idea how uh, about the relations uh, between because they don't the objects don't seem to have been chosen. Uh, casually just uh, as precious objects uh, uh, i mean one was uh, there there are very different types of uh, of objects in the different deposits so i just wonder if you mm -hmm. thought about this and, and if um, you have any idea and uh, it's um, it could be a gender question because uh, the deposit one is only uh, weapons and uh, the deposit two and uh, three are jewelry um, uh, beads. This could be a gender question. Mm. And something similar and... had been observed in other uh, previous excavations in these other sanctuaries, or this is yes, a thing yes, yes, uh, it's. Same. Uh, Comparable with uh, Shilda, it's uh, uh, Melifrele one, it's uh, near to Kurjani. Um, the, the fonts are very comparable with under sanctuary fonts. They are uh, excavated from Chiazo, Pizzalauri. Um, uh, Deposits two and three, I think it was um, it was deposited together, and um, it is very interesting. In the deposit three, we have many broken pieces. They are um, manufactured. Uh, they are not uh, second and. Uh, no secondary damages, but uh, they are um, manufacturing false, but they put uh, the in the vessels and the deposits three are with many so uh, fine broken 
pieces from palettes or pendants. And fun is, uh, it was also very interesting to see this fact. Other comments or questions? If not, I have just another small, small question. I'm sorry, but I'm very curious about this uh, exceptional find. I see Kevin, just a quick question. And what about these uh, seals, let's say, the, where they were found exactly in the within the round structure? I mean, uh, close to the deposits, uh, inside the deposits, or just lying different, around? Different, so around and, and all uh, areal. OK, so can Only we... one piece were in Plateau Trench 1. Thank you. So, Kevin? Uh, I just have actually a question about the progress of the uh, of the um, the archaeological campaign in uh, in uh, eastern Georgia. This has to do with the, um, as Shoyna certainly knows, the politics of the Georgian cultural ministry uh, under the new cultural minister. And uh, uh, last year, there were essentially no archaeological digs carried out in Georgia. They were all uh, refused permission to go to the field. And so is there any evidence that things have changed, that you will be able to go to the field and continue work in uh, in eastern Georgia? Or what is the situation with the cultural ministry, if you, if you have any idea? Kevin, it's, uh, <laughs> it's Georgia. <laughs> yes, I, know. I don't know. <laughs> it's very... This year was uh, very bad for us because we were there and uh, we couldn't dig because we hadn't um, uh, excavation permit. I don't know. Well, all I can say is I really hope there's a change of heart in uh, the the cultural ministry that Tiani uh, will understand how big important problem. it is. Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah. uh, it was uh, we are not uh, not only Nazar Lebi team, uh, also under European um, teams couldn't dig this year. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> I wish you, I wish you <laughs> luck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, we, we all hope that uh, this year things will be better, but we, we don't know, in fact. Uh, last year it was... Uh, it very, must be. <laughs> yeah, really very strange. We, we were allowed to excavate, but we, we don't know why why we were allowed and other teams were not so it's uh, <laughs> it's total uh, mystery yeah. you have, so, um, yeah. so no no other comments i uh, well i think this is uh, something that we we have to all uh, all to think about, and uh, there are so many interesting things um, about if, this um, kind of. Uh, of uh, if you have um, any questions, please uh, send me an email. It's uh, very helpful for me too, uh, uh, because I know uh, which questions uh, are open. Um, and it's for me uh, better to write as uh, so quickly uh, um, speak in English. Yes, this I think it's a, a very good idea. And uh, I also ask everybody if uh, you don't have a direct contact to Shorena, you can contact uh, um, Alessandra or me and we, we will forward your questions to, to Shorena and she will uh, and she will answer. So 
if no late questions, I think we can uh, all of us, uh, we can thank uh, Shorena for, the, for sharing with us with these uh, um, very important finds. And uh, so when had, uh, another question, Kevin as well. I see two. No, it's not a question. I'm, no, just, I'm applauding. Just clapping I'm their applauding hands. a very good ah, Okay, they are clapping. So <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Shorena. And it was, uh, it was a pleasure to have you here with us. So which uh, next, uh, next meeting is, I think, in two weeks. Can you remind yes, me, uh, Alessandra? I can just uh, announce it. Um, the next meeting will be on February 23rd. Uh, a lecture on megalith by Hans mm, on, uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, I will send the link as we did this time that worked very well and also by the Jack Sasson list which I don't think if we manage again probably we okay. didn't no, we sent but, it uh, two days ago, but uh, obviously it was not early, it was uh, early late, enough. But we but, will get better about that. And so we'll keep you informed. And, uh, and then there will be um, several lectures, uh, actually every Thursday at four o'clock in the month of March, including the first one, uh, Heinz and Kutna will be speaking, Sari Pals, Francesca Bertoldi, and perhaps uh, Irina Gambashidze, but we don't have uh, confirmation from her, I think, uh, so far. And that will be it. So, but you will receive a link, so uh, you will be posted. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for everybody for attending and see you next time. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Thank you so much, Sharena, and to bye. all of you for being here. Bye-bye.